Hello everyone and welcome back to some more remote learning. In today's video, we're going to go over some U substitution examples. So let's just do a quick introduction or reintroduction. Previously, we learned the chain rule for differentiation, which allowed us to differentiate composite functions. So functions within functions. Now we will essentially reverse that by integrating with the method known as U substitution. Let's take a look at the integral of x squared times 2x dx. Yes, this is a fairly simple integral to evaluate once we distribute that 2x to the x squared. So this is technically equivalent to 2x cubed dx. How do we integrate that? Increase the exponent by 1 and then divide. So that's going to be 2x to the 4th over 4, which is equivalent to x to the fourth over two, and don't forget our plus c because this is an indefinite integral. So that was fairly simple to do it this way, but let's practice this. Now that we have our answer, let's attempt to do this with u substitution. So for u substitution, we're going to pick a function in our problem to be our u, and we want to try to find the derivative of u already in our integrand already in our problem as well. So for example, in this case, I would set my u as x squared, because if u was equal to x squared, when I take the derivative with respect to x, I'm going to get that du over dx is equal to 2x. And a lot of times I just skip this middle step and go straight to the end, where I have that du is equal to 2x dx, and that was moving this dx over to the other side of my equation, essentially multiplying it. But I have du equals 2x dx, which you can see is right here, my 2x dx. So if I was to rewrite this problem, I would write it as the integral of u du, the integral of u du. Now I just integrate with respect to u. So when I integrate with respect to u, I'm going to get u squared over 2 plus c. Because I had u to the first, I add 1 to that exponent and divide by that new exponent to get u squared over 2 plus c. However, my original integral was in terms of x, and I don't have bounds to potentially switch. We'll learn about that later. So I'm going to go back to x. And to go back to x, I plug in x squared for u because that was my equation, that relationship between those. So I'm going to get x squared squared over 2 plus c, which x squared squared is x to the fourth over 2 plus c. You can see we got the same result when we just integrated this problem. So in this case, it was easier just to distribute that through and integrate. However, there's going to be functions, which you'll see in examples below, where that's not possible and u substitution is necessary in order to integrate. One more time before moving on to our examples, for u substitution, we need to find a u in our problem where the du is pretty much already there. And as you'll notice below, it's okay if that du is off by some multiplication of a constant, that's okay because we can easily adjust that. But once we find our u and du, and then we'll rewrite the problem as u, integrate with respect to u, and then go back to x. So let's look at example one. In example one, part a, we're going to start by integrating one over three x plus seven to the fourth. What would be a good u for this problem, because I don't know how to integrate 3x plus 7 to the negative fourth. It's a function within another function itself. So let's put that inner function as our u. Let's set u as 3x plus 7. If that's our u, then our du over dx is going to be 3. So I get that du is equal to 3 dx. So here I have my u, and my u is raised to the fourth, but do I have du in my problem? 
do I have a 3dx? No, I currently only have a 1dx, but that's okay, I'm only off by that multiplication of the constant. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide both sides by 3. So that du over 3 is going to be equivalent to dx. When I substitute u in, I'm going to get 1 over u to the 4th, because again, that 3x plus 7 was u, so I'll get 1 over u to the 4th, and dx, remember, is du over 3. So this is going to be multiplied by du over 3. Can I integrate this? Yeah, I totally can. And it might be easier to think of it as, let's pull that constant of 1 third out in front. So this will be 1 third times the integral of, I'll write this as u to the negative fourth du. Now we'll integrate everything in terms of u. So we'll get 1 third times u to the, remember we're increasing that exponent by one and then dividing by the new exponent. So that's going to become u to the negative three all over a negative three. Adding negative four to one and then dividing by negative four plus one. And because this is an indefinite integral, we have our plus c. So this will become negative times the positive is going to be a negative, so this is negative 1 over 9u cubed plus c. So what I did is I moved this negative exponent into the denominator as a positive and combined 3 and negative 3. But remember, our integral is in terms of x, so we want our answer in terms of x. This is going to be equivalent to negative 1 over 9 times, what was my u? 3x plus 7. So 3x plus 7 cubed plus c. Again, negative 1 over 9 times 3x plus 7 cubed plus c. Let's move on to part b. In part b, we're dealing with the sine of 8x, integrating that with respect to x. We know how to integrate just the sine of x. Can we integrate the sine of u? Yeah, so let's make u equal to that 8x, and then du over dx, taking the derivative with respect to x, is going to be 8. So du is going to equal 8 dx. So I have the sine of u, but what is my dx? My du is 8 dx, which makes dx equal to du over 8. So I'm going to have the integral of sine of u and then du over 8, which I can pull that 1 eighth all the way out in front. So I have 1 eighth times the integral of sine of u du. Can I integrate sine of u du? Yeah. So we're going to get 1 eighth times What's the integral of sine of u? That's going to be negative cosine of u. And then we have our plus c. So we have negative 1 eighth cosine of u plus c, but I want to go back to x. So this is going to be negative 1 eighth cosine of 8x plus c. And because we're still learning u substitution, Let's double check by taking the derivative. If we were to take the derivative of our solution, the derivative of a constant goes to zero. So taking the derivative of negative 1 eighth cosine of 8x, think about it. Chain rule, we're going to keep that negative 1 eighth out in front. What's the derivative of cosine of 8x? That's going to be a negative sine of 8x. And then what's the derivative of 8x? Remembering to take the derivative of the inside, that's going to be 8. Look what we have here. 8 cancels out with 8. Negative cancels out with a negative. We have sine of 8x, which is what we started with within our integral. So remember, taking the derivative of our antiderivative is a good double check. So moving on to part c, we get t to the 4th times t to the 5th plus 3 all raised to the 8th. Now remember, what we want is we want to choose u 
where du is somewhere in our problem. So if you think about u taking the derivative, especially when dealing with powers, that exponent is going to be one less. So it makes sense to set our u as t to the fifth plus three, because four is one less than t to the fifth. So we're going to set u as t to the fifth plus three. So then du over dt, taking the integral, taking the derivative with respect to t of u, that's going to be five t to the fourth. So du, in this case, is going to equal five t to the fourth dt, which we have t to the fourth dt, but we don't have that five, so we're going to divide by it. So dividing by five, we'll get that du over five is equal to t to the fourth dt. So rewriting this in terms of u, I'm going to get the integral of u to the eighth du, and that's a du over five, so I'll pull my one fifth out in front. Now let's integrate. We'll get one fifth times u to the ninth, all over nine plus c. Going back to our original variable, t, that's going to be, well, u is t to the fifth plus three, so this is going to be t to the fifth plus three, all raised to the ninth, and then five times nine is 45. And we have plus c. t to the fifth plus three, all raised to the ninth, all over 45 plus c. Want to double check? Take the derivative and see if you do indeed get what's inside our integral. Let's continue on to part D. In part D, we're integrating 4r times e to the 3r squared, all with respect to r. What would be a good u for this problem? If I set my u as e to the 3r squared, remember the derivative of e to some function is e to that function times the derivative of my function. And I don't have another e in this problem, so I don't think that's going to be a good u. However, remember what I mentioned about the power rule for differentiation. We always get one power less. So if I set my u as 3r squared, my du is going to be something to deal with this r. And this 4 is just a constant, so I can either pull it out in front at the start or I can manipulate it within my problem. So let's set u as 3r squared, and then du dr is going to be equal to 6r, and then du is 6r dr. Now I don't have a 6r dr, I have a 4r dr, but as opposed to attempting to make this over here look like 4r dr, I'm just going to have it as r dr, where I divide by 6. That way, with my 4 pulled out in front, I'll now have 4 6 times e to the u du. And again, so you can see that, there's my u, 3r squared, and then my du, remember, was 6r dr. So if I had a 6 out in front, 6r dr is my du. But because I introduced that 6, I need to make sure that I also divide by it, because I can only ever multiply by 1. So my 6r dr becomes my du, and then I have 4 sixths that I pulled out in front. That's just another way to think about how to manipulate our du. Now I'm ready to integrate. I'll get 4 sixths times e to the u plus c, because the integral of e to the u is e to the u. And that then becomes 4 sixths, which simplifying that down is really 2 thirds, times e to the u, which was e to the 3r squared, and this indefinite integral, so plus c. Moving on to e, we're going to be setting our u as that denominator, 5y squared plus 3y minus 4. So if our entire denominator is u, well, du with respect to y, du dy, is going to be 10y plus 3. So du is 10y plus 3, 
dy. And I don't have a 10y plus 3, however, if I manipulate my numerator, I can pull out a 2 from each of my terms. And pulling out a 2 from my numerator, that's going to leave me with 10y plus 3. So now I have my du in my numerator. So rewriting this, pulling this 2 out in front that I took out of each of my terms, I'll get 2 times 1 over u du. And again, that's because 10y plus 3 dy is my du, so there's my du, and then I have 1 over u. Integrating this, what's the integral of 1 over u? That's the ln of u. So this becomes 2 ln absolute value of u plus c, which plugging back in my original variable, which is y, that's going to be 2 times the ln of 5y squared plus 3y minus 4 plus c. And the last problem in this section, I have 1 over 1 plus 9v squared. If we remember back to differentiating inverse trig functions or integrating inverse trig functions, what is the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared with respect to x? Remember, that was equal to the inverse tangent of x plus c. So all I need to do is change this to be something that looks like 1 plus x squared or 1 plus u squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my u as, well, I want this to be just a u squared. I've got v squared. What's the square root of 9? That's 3. So if I set u as 3v, the derivative of u with respect to v is going to be 3. So that's going to be du equals 3 dv, which I have dv in my problem. I just don't have my 3, so I'll simply divide by that. So now, rewriting this, I'll have 1 over 3 times the integral of 1 over 1 plus u squared d u. 3v, when I square that, that's going to be 9v squared because 3 squared times v squared is 9v squared. So now integrating this, this is just 1 third times the inverse tangent of u plus c, which u was 3v, so this becomes inverse tangent of 3v all over 3 plus c. Let's move on to now doing substitution with definite integrals. So for the indefinite integrals up above, we always went back to that original variable that we were integrating with respect to. However, with definite integrals, that's not necessary. Since we're writing that equation that relates u and our variable that we're starting with, we're not only just going to be using that for substitution, we'll also use that to change the bounds. So let's take a look with that example from up above, now with bounds. So here was that very basic example we started with, x squared times 2x dx. Remember in this case, we had set our u as x squared so that our du was 2x dx. So when we integrated, we had u du. However, I have bounds on this problem. And when I'm integrating u du, I'm not going from 1 to 2. That's 1 to 2 for x. But now I'm integrating with respect to not x. So let's do this two different ways. First of all, let's not switch our bounds. So I'm going to make a note that x is still equal to 2 and x is equal to 1. So I know that those bounds are not for u, they're for x. So integrating u, again, that became u squared over 2. But my bounds are from x equals 1 to x equals 2. So I need to make sure I go back to x in order to use my bounds. So this becomes x to the fourth because we have x squared squared. 
So that's x to the fourth over two from one to two. That becomes two to the fourth over two minus one to the fourth over two. Two to the fourth over two is two cubed, which is eight. So this becomes eight minus one half. You can simplify this down to be 15 halves. So that was evaluating our integral with bounds without switching the bounds. However, I think changing the bounds makes this process a lot easier because if we change those bounds, we don't have to go back to x. We can just continue working with u for the entirety of our problem. So at this step here, when I changed my integral to be the integral of u du, why don't I switch my bounds at this step here? If x equals two and x equals one, I have a relationship between u and x. I have that u equals x squared. So my lower bound is going to be u equals one squared, which one squared gives me one. And my upper bound is going to be that u equals two squared, which two squared gives me four. So now that I've switched my bounds, I can just integrate with respect to u and use those bounds. There's no need to go back to that x at all. So let's integrate this. This becomes u squared over two, and I'm evaluating that from one to four. So this is going to be four squared over two minus one squared over two. Four squared is 16, 16 over two is eight, minus one squared is one, that's minus one half. 8 minus 1 half is the same exact thing we got when we switched our bounds. However, we did it in a couple less steps because in this first part, we integrated, then we went back to x, and then we finally plugged in. Whereas here, when we switched our bounds, we integrated and then plugged those new bounds right on in. So you're going to get the same result whether you switch your bounds or not. Let's go ahead and switch our bounds for the rest of this worksheet because if we're already establishing that relationship and we have bounds, why revert and go back to x? Let's just stick with u. So we're going to evaluate each of the definite integrals in example two. So for part a, I have sine of 2t times cosine of 2t dt. So what am I going to set my u as? Remember, my u, I want to find the derivative within the problem. So if I set my u as the sine of 2t, What's the derivative of sine? That's going to be a cosine of that function times the derivative of the function. So if I have sine of 2t as my u, my du dt is going to be cosine of 2t all multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is all multiplied by two. So du is going to be two cosine of 2t dt, which I have my cosine of dt in there. The only thing I don't have is that two. So I just got to make sure I divide by it. Put that one half out in front. So I have u and then du over two. So this is going to become one half u du. And remember, I have bounds. So let's switch them. If I plug zero in for t, in order to solve for u, the sine of two times zero is the sine of zero, which equals zero. So my lower bound is going to be zero, and then plugging pi in, sine of two pi, well, that's also zero. So integrating from zero to zero, that's just going to be zero. So my solution is zero. No need to even integrate because my bounds are the same, so I know that's going to be zero. But let's assume that we didn't switch our bounds and we left this as zero and pi, then we would have gotten one half times u squared over two from x equals zero to x equals pi. Or our variable in this case is actually t, so going back to t, that's t equals zero to t equals pi. u is sine of two t, so I'm going to have sine squared of two t all over four from zero to pi. And look at this, if we plugged pi in, sine of two pi is zero, zero over four is zero, minus plugging zero in, sine of two t, 
sine of two times zero is zero, so we're still subtracting zero over four. Zero minus zero is zero. So we get zero for our solution in this problem. If you want to, for extra practice, try evaluating this problem from zero to pi over four. Because then when we plug pi over four in, the sine of two times pi over four is the sine of pi over two, which is going to give us a positive one. So now our bounds go from zero to one, so we're going to get a solution other than zero. So go ahead and work this problem out on your own. I believe you should get one fourth, so double check that and then continue on to part B. Moving on to part B, we have the ln of 5x all over 2x and we're integrating that with respect to x from our bounds 1 to 4. So what would be a good u and a good du? I think a lot of times dealing with the ln, it's a little hard to see the u. But think about the derivative of the ln of some function. That's 1 over the function. So if I set my u as the ln of 5x, well then, my du dx is going to be equal to 1 over 5x times 5, which we know is going to be 1 over x. So du is equal to 1 over x dx. And I have that in my problem. I have my 1 over x dx. So in order to simplify this down, I'll pull that 1 half out in front because that 2 is just some constant that's multiplied to everything. And then I'll have u du because ln of 5x was u and then dx over x was my du and I pulled that one half right on out in front. And for this problem, what else do I have to do? I have to switch my bounds in terms of u. Otherwise, if I didn't do that, I'd have to go back to x and then plug my original bounds in. However, if I switch my bounds, it's going to save me a little bit of time. So plugging in 1 for x, that lower bound is going to be the ln of 5 times 1, which is the ln of 5, and then plugging in my upper bound of 4 for x, that's going to be the ln of 5 times 4, which is the ln of 20. So let's go ahead and integrate this. We're going to get u squared over 2, but remember there is a 1 half out in front. And that's going to be evaluated from the ln of 5 to the ln of 20. So I'm going to get u squared over 4 from the ln of 5 to the ln of 20. Plugging the ln of 20 in, that's going to be the ln of 20 and it's the ln of 20 squared all over 4 minus the ln of 5, that quantity squared all over 4. And that's my solution to part B. Moving on to part C, I have 4 minus 2y over y squared minus 4y dy. And I'm integrating that from my bounds of negative 3 to negative 1. For this problem, we're going to set our u as our denominator, y squared minus 4y. And that's because du dy is in our problem. Taking the derivative of u squared minus 4y is going to be 2y minus 4. 2y minus 4 dy is our du. But think about it. We don't have 2y minus 4. We have 4 minus 2y. So our du is actually multiplying 2y minus 4 dy by a negative 1. So if I multiplied du by a negative 1, you'll see that I will indeed get negative 2y plus 4, or 4 minus 2y dy. And that was multiplying negative 1 to both sides. So this is a negative du. Rewriting our integral, we're going to get, I'll pull my negative all the way out in front, that's going to be negative 1 over u du, or du over u. Again, here was my du, but I had to multiply that by a negative 1. So I pulled that negative out in front. And now we're also going to switch our bounds. Starting with our lower bound of negative 3, plugging that in for y squared minus 4y, I'm going to get negative 3 squared minus 4 times negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9, 
9 minus a 4 times a negative 3 is going to be 9 minus a negative 12, or 9 plus 12. And 9 plus 12 is going to give me 21. Now, for my upper bound, plugging negative 1 in, negative 1 squared is a positive 1, and then I have 1 minus 4 times negative 1, or 1 plus 4, which is going to be a positive 5. So now I'm going to integrate negative du over u from my bounds of 21 to 5. And I can reverse those. Remember those integration rules that we know. We can switch our bounds by multiplying our entire integral by a negative. And if I multiply this entire integral by a negative, it's going to cancel that negative out in front. So this is going to be the integral of du over u from 5 to 21 du over u, integrating that is the ln of u. So this is going to equal the ln of the absolute value of u from 5 to 21, which is going to be the ln of 21 minus the ln of 5. And again, I could switch my bounds because I multiplied a negative out in front. Negative times negative gave me that positive, and you can see I had adjusted my bounds. Let's continue on to part D. In part D, we have the integral of e to the 3x over e to the 3x plus 4, integrating that with respect to x from 3 to 7. u is going to be e to the 3x plus 4 because that derivative is in my problem. The derivative with respect to x is going to be e to the 3x. Taking the derivative of e to the 3x, I need to also multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 3. And then the derivative of 4, 4 is a constant, that goes to 0. So I have du equal to 3e to the 3x dx. Here is my e to the 3x dx. I just don't have that 3. But we know how to take care of that. Just divide it out. So du over 3 equals e to the 3x dx. So when I rewrite my integral, I'm going to have a one-third out in front. So I'll have one-third times the integral of, I'll switch my bounds in a second, this is going to be du over u again. Here's my u, there was my du, and then over 3. So switching my bounds, plugging 3 in for x, I'm going to get e to the 3 times 3 plus 4, which is going to be e to the 9th plus 4. And then my upper bound, plugging 7 in, e to the 3 times 7 is going to be e to the 21 plus 4. Now I'm ready to integrate because the integral of du over u is the ln of u. So this is 1 third times the ln of the absolute value of u, where my bounds for u are from e to the 9th plus 4 to e to the 21st plus 4. So this is going to be one-third times the ln of, plugging in that upper bound first, that's e to the 21st plus 4, and I'll subtract one-third times the ln of e to the 9th plus 4. And there we have it. That's my final solution on this worksheet. If you have any questions about switching the bounds or about u substitution in general, please feel free to let me know. And if you want to learn more integration strategies, continue on to my Calc 2 video series. But for now, good luck with your online learning.